Getting a diagnosis like an anal fistula can be pretty confusing and, let's be honest, a little stressful. So in this explainer, we're going to break it all down. We'll cover exactly what it is, where it comes from, and most importantly, how it's treated, all in a way that's super clear and easy to understand. All right, so let's just jump right in. The very first question for most people is, you know, what is an anal fistula? It's one of those terms you probably never hear until suddenly you have to. So let's get right to it and figure this out together. You know, the story of an anal fistula almost always starts with something a little more common, a problem you might have actually heard of, an anal abscess. It's really the first chapter in this whole process. And that connection between the two, it's a really big deal. So get this, about one out of every three people who get an anal abscess will end up developing a fistula. So yeah, it's actually a pretty common thing to happen after that initial infection. Okay, so let's rewind and start right at the beginning. Because to really get what a fistula is, you first have to understand the abscess that kicks the whole thing off. So, an anal abscess. What is it really? Well, put simply, it's just a painful swollen pocket of infection, of pus, that forms right near the anus. And the cause? It's actually way simpler than you might think. It all starts when one of the tiny, normal glands that we all have inside our anal canal just gets blocked. And you can see exactly how it happens here. Step one, one of those little glands gets clogged up. Step two, bacteria, which are totally normal to have there, get trapped inside. And because they have nowhere to go, they start to multiply and boom, you've got an infection, a pocket of pus, and that is your abscess. Now, the good news here is that treating an abscess is usually pretty straightforward. The main goal, the number one priority, is just to drain that infection. You gotta relieve the pressure and the pain and get all that bacteria out. It's the standard treatment for a reason. It just plain works. Okay, so the abscess is drained. What now? Well, for a lot of people, maybe two thirds of them, that's it, story's over. But for that other third we talked about, even after the infection is cleared up, something can get left behind. And that is where the fistula enters the picture. So this is the fistula. Think of it like a little tunnel that stays open under the skin. It connects that original gland where the infection started all the way to the outside skin where the abscess drained. So the infection itself is gone, but the path it carved out, that can stick around. Now here's where things get really important. One of the first things your surgeon is going to figure out is whether your fistula is simple or complex. And this distinction, it is probably the most important factor when it comes to deciding on the best treatment. So what's the difference? Well, it all comes down to your sphincter muscles. A great way to think about these muscles is as gatekeepers. They are literally what control your bowels. Their job is absolutely critical, which is why protecting them is priority number one, always, during any kind of treatment. Okay, so look here. This is the key difference. On the left, you see a simple fistula. Its little tunnel path pretty much avoids the main gatekeeper muscle, or just involves a tiny bit of it. But on the right, that's a complex fistula. You can see its tunnel goes right through a big chunk of that muscle. And as you can imagine, treating that requires a whole different, much more careful game plan. So because the path of that tunnel is so, so important, the very first step in getting this healed is for your surgeon to create a really clear picture of exactly where it goes. I like to think of it like this. You wouldn't start a cross-country road trip without a map, right? Well, it's the same idea here. Your surgeon needs a precise map of the fistula's path to plan the safest and most effective route to healing. That's how they make sure they can protect those all-important gatekeeper muscles. So how do they get that map? The gold standard, the best way to do it, is often a procedure called an examination under anesthesia, or EUA. It sounds a little intimidating, but all it means is that while you're comfortably asleep, your surgeon can very gently and thoroughly trace the fistula's entire path. It doesn't cause you any pain, and it gives them all the info they need to choose the absolute best treatment plan for you. All right, so once the map is made and we know if the fistula is simple or complex, every surgeon is working toward the exact same three goals. And those goals are really clear and really important. Goal number one, control any infection. Goal number two, and this is the big one, preserve your bowel control. That means protecting those gatekeeper muscles at all costs. And goal number three, heal the fistula for good so it doesn't come back. So how do surgeons actually pull this off? Well, there are a bunch of different procedures, but they basically all fall into two main strategies, and it all depends on whether we're dealing with a simple or a complex fistula. We're just going to talk about the main ideas here, 
not get bogged down in all the super technical surgical details. Okay, so for simple fistulas, the ones where those gatekeeper muscles aren't really involved, the most common and effective procedure is called a fistulotomy. But for complex fistulas, the game plan is totally different. The surgeon uses what are called sphincter sparing procedures. These are really clever techniques designed to close the tunnel while carefully protecting the muscle. Let's take a quick look at how a fistulotomy actually works. It's a pretty straightforward idea. As you can see, the surgeon basically just opens up the top of that shallow tunnel, kind of turning it from a tunnel into a little ditch. This lets the whole area heal naturally from the bottom up, which gets rid of the path for good. It's an incredibly effective fix for the right kind of fistula. Now for the complex ones. Things get a bit more, well, clever. There are techniques like the lift procedure, and the idea behind this is really brilliant. Instead of cutting through the muscle, the surgeon makes a small incision away from the fistula and finds the tunnel in the space between the two sphincter muscles. From there, they can tie it off and divide it, which closes off the internal opening without ever having to cut those critical gatekeeper muscles. It's pretty amazing. Wow, okay, we have covered a lot of ground, haven't we? From the abscess that starts it all, to mapping the path, to the different ways to heal. So let's bring it all home and talk about the most important part, your role in all of this. So after all this talk about abscesses, tunnels, gatekeeper muscles, and different surgeries, what's the one big thing, the most important takeaway for you to hold on to? It's actually really simple. It's this, every single fistula is unique. Your path is going to be your own. There is no one size fits all fix for this. Healing is a partnership, a team effort between you and your surgeon. So the best, most powerful thing you can do is talk with your doctor. Ask all the questions you have. Work together as a team to figure out the absolute best plan for you.